The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Well then, my furry little friend, um, I actually have a follow-up. What? what? Another segment in between our two <laughs> main segments? <laughs> Weren't expecting that, were you? Well, it is uh, once again follow-up time. I have a follow-up on last week's discussion entitled Whatever Freaking Happened to Brendan Fraser. Yes. For Christ's sake, there was a window of a few years, maybe even a decade, when he was in everything. Yes. He was in everything all of the time forever, and he was just he was all over the place. You couldn't you couldn't throw a dead cat without hitting Brendan Fraser in a movie. And um, Bella probably won't realize this, but back in the day, uh, dead cat throwing was a big deal. It's in the wind windowsill, Bella. The the remote. I remember I saw it like a like an hour ago. It's in there. Just touch another remote for the TV. You should get it out. Is what I'm saying. Regardless of whether or not you're watching it on the TV, it's going to be forgotten there because oh, I'm drinking. True. Well, apparently. Brendan Fraser is not having the best time right now. No. So, as far as I can tell, this is the story of Brendan Fraser at the moment. He got married. Okay. He had three kids. He bought a huge ass mansion. And he was in a bajillion movies, right? Then the parts started drying up. He wasn't making as much money. He sold his mansion, and he got a divorce. But in the divorce settlement, as far as I can tell, he is expected to pay divorce child custody payments that are drastically high, as if he is still the big star with the mansion. Yes. Like, the, the wife, apparently, was used to a specific lifestyle, and he still has to pay for that lifestyle. What I have heard is that he is paying upwards of $900,000 annually. Wow. Brendan Fraser doesn't have that kind of goddamn money anymore? No. Not at all. Was the last time you saw Brendan Fraser in anything? So the chances are that Brendan Fraser is living in a crappy one bedroom apartment in ghetto nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right now he's got to be at the level of if you go out to Subway, you know, if you if you're driving home, you grab a sub for dinner or lunch or something like that. Uh, any of the napkins that they they give you that you don't use. You save. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a good chance that he is sleeping on somebody's couch. Yes. You know? Yes. By the way, here is the... Jesus, Eleanor. Why are you screeching? You are not a raptor. By the way, this follow-up came to me from a soon-to-be brand-new Brendan Fraser-centric podcast that is okay. so new. This podcast is so new, I'm not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to talk about it. Okay. No, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Like, like I was talking to a friend at work, and, I, I, and we were in receiving together and i'm like oh my god look at that what nothing it's just we have mu the mummy funko pops did you see the mummy that is horrible yes oh no i didn't see tom cruise's the mummy i've only watched i'm i'm just a big brendan fraser fan that's so funny i was just talking to my friend bunny on the podcast and we were talking about whatever happened to brendan fraser and then apparently that was a trigger word yeah 
Because she's like, oh my god, let me tell you the entire story of what happened to Brendan Fraser. I'm going to talk nonstop for five minutes. And I know these things because my best friend is working on a podcast. What's the name of the podcast? It's called Blank. Oh, well, I'll give Blank a shout out on my podcast. Yes. And maybe they can give a shout out to me on their podcast. Okay, I'll text them. And they don't want you to mention it. I'm like, okay, I can I can give them like some buzz ahead of their release. Well, they're not getting released until the end of the month, maybe, and they're not sure when they're coming out. So just don't mention them. So this is me not specifically mentioning the name of this certain to be wonderful Brendan Fraser centered podcast. And we could still shout them out when they decide to come out of the podcasting closet. Yeah. Yeah. But I am but really curious the, about the super secret podcast. Yeah. Yeah. The the name is kind of jokey and cute and Brendan Fraser themed, but I can't mention it. But anyway, when it does come out. I'll be sure and give them a second shout out. Like I'm already giving them a shout out, but whatever. This this may be very smart. This may be very smart of them, actually. This this may be, you know, Hillary's book. <clears throat> yeah, or that podcast that was really popular that focused solely on uh, what's his name, uh, Richard Simmons. Yes. Because I think, uh, you know, we're not the only two people in the world that are wondering what the hell happened to Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause just, just the idea that I don't know, all I know is there is a super secret podcast about Brendan Coming Fraser. Yep. And I am, right at this moment, I am so fucking intrigued now. Yeah, yeah. So and like I'm it's not allowed working. To the name of the podcast. I'm not allowed to mention the name of the podcast. It's supposedly coming out uh, any time now at the end of this month or the beginning of next month. But yeah, I'm not allowed to mention them. And, and, and I think this has all been has all been an amazing shout out. Yo, it's been a great shout out, and it hasn't been a shout out to a show that we know nothing about. Yeah, yeah. But how interesting, how in interesting the the fortuitousness yes. that I happen to work with someone who is best friends with someone who's working on a podcast that will focus solely on what the hell happened to Brendan Fraser. Yeah. That's some Saren fucking dippity right there. Yeah. And That's I... some Saren dippity doodah, zippity a. And so I really, that. and I really just like Brendan Fraser, um, m much like what Cracked Cracked dot com wrote about him once. I, I really like Brendan Fraser because he just seems like a really nice guy. Oh, absolutely! You know, absolutely. And and yeah. not too long ago. Somewhere in our three years of podcasting, I, I had seen him in a movie, and I remember I mentioned it on the podcast, and it was god awful, but I loved it because it was Brendan Fraser. Yeah, this he this is was, incredible. This was where he was he was a he was a land developer who moved to this quaint little town. And decided it would be a good place for a, I don't know, a resort or some shit. Something that he would have to rape the land for, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and that's what he was doing. It was a big plan. He was getting his bosses in on it. This was going to make a million dollars, and you know, he was he was trying to get around every environmental protection thing that he possibly could. I forget the title of this movie. But then the animals started talking to him. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I am aware of the existence of that. It's a fucking horrible movie. Yeah. It's a stupid movie. But I love it in the way that I love the computer who wore tennis shoes. Because ah, that's exactly yeah. what it reminds me of. 
Yeah. It's just like, God, this is shit. Why is it so entertaining? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for a uh, super secret Brendan Fraser podcast. Yes. It's a cute name, but I can't mention it. I can't mention it. I'm not going to mention it. I'm going to keep it professional. Well then, William Bunspear. Uh, by the way, that nickname came from my wife, Natasha. Nice. It's homework time once again on the Wait Pope a second. Film. What happened to What happened to Brendan Fraser? <laughs> um it, that was the end of the Brendan Fraser story. There's a good chance he's sleeping on a couch somewhere, but we don't know for sure. No one knows what's going oh, on. Oh, okay, yet. okay. The last thing that anyone heard from him was I believe 2014 or 2015 when he went to the courts and begged for them to lower the amount he has to pay annually to his ex-wife. I'm not sure what the whether he got the amount lowered, but it is a ridiculous amount. He is paying $900,000 yes. annually and there's no way he can afford that now. And that's like, that's like one one thirtieth of a George of the Jungle check, and and I think that backs up the theory that he's just a really really nice guy, and and didn't you, fight over much in the divorce. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's the that's the 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 interest the intriguing thing, which would make for a great podcast, is that. We're going to assume that he's sleeping in someone's guest house. Yes. He's sleeping in some uh, friend's boathouse, Rory Gilmore style, but no he's, one knows for sure. He's, he's basically yeah. missing right now. He's somebody's Cato Kalen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So no one knows for sure what happened to Brendan Fraser. But don't worry, because I hear that there's going to soon be a podcast which focuses exclusively on this. In fact, I'd love to tell you the name, but I can't. Yeah. They promised. Ooh, secret. <laughs> anyway, it's homework time once again on the Pope on Film podcast. <coughs> People of the internet, your attention, please. Put down your torrents and kindly pay attention. Each week, the Council of Bunnies chooses a piece of homework in order to better the show's listeners, nay, North Americans everywhere. Yeah. And screw you, South America, where <laughs> life is cheap. And this week's homework is all about education. Yes, we all, all of us in America, need to be properly educated. Yeah. About love, about goodness and righteousness, and about the country that will soon kill us all. Yes. Yes, this week, it is the 2008 Vice documentary... The Vice Guide to North Korea. <laughs> Haven't watched this for a while, honey. It was it a trip to go back to this. But I felt we should watch it because they're about to kill us all. Yeah, it's good to have some inside info. Yeah, it's good to have some info. When I first saw this, like, yeah. you know, yeah. eight odd years ago, it scared the shit out of me. I yeah. remember going, wait, what nation wants to kill us all? North Korea? I don't even know where that is. They can't kill me. I'm too lovable to die. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And the weird thing is, is that uh, Shane Smith can hardly be considered a journalist. I've been watching Vice so much that I remember. Did you see the documentary where he went to a Japanese brothel? And had sex with a, a love doll, doll? Yeah. a Japanese doll, and he ended up decapitating it. 
Like, <laughs> also, we got his biography. He is so fucking drunk so much that I have a heart. Huh? No, not you, him. I'm talking about this guy. Okay. But he can hardly be considered a journalist. Like, if anything, he's a guy who lucked into a situation. But I, 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 I doubt the validity of the word journalist. Oh, yeah. Entertaining as shit. Why couldn't he be a journalist? I could be a journalist. I love you. Video journalist. Don't hurt That's me. That's what he is. Do I look like I'm going to hurt you? I have no idea what's going on in your mind. <laughs> and you would be frightened if you did. Okay, now you're worrying me. So originally, Vice was a local Canadian indie magazine. An oh, actual okay. print magazine. That's how they started. They were in Canada. They were the cool Canadian indie magazine. But they made a name for themselves with their magazine's loose morals. <laughs> Here's a review of uh, uh, the best club drugs to do. Here's a review of... Uh, a, here's a poem I wrote about why anal is awesome. <laughs> Like, they were that kind of magazine. They pushed the boundaries. They yeah. they would they would try as hard as they can to just offend you and just be open and liberal about everything. And the the one thing that they became successful for is that every issue, every month, at the end of the magazine, they would have vices, do's and don'ts. Yeah. Where literally anyone anywhere could send them a picture of someone and they would either list that as a fashion do or a fashion don't. And then they would either talk about how you look wonderful or rip you to shit. <laughs> this was such a big deal that when they went to New York, they had an all New York issue of Vice magazine. And they got Joe Strummer to help them with their do's and don'ts. Of the Clash? Yeah, yeah. I know this because the first time I ever realized what Vice was, we got the Vice book of do's and don'ts. And it was literally just a 400-page book of random pictures of people that Shane Smith and the gang of Vice made fun of. <laughs> the do's and don'ts were not only hilarious, but it was also a fun voyeuristic way to see nudity, boobs, and penises. Because ah. anyone could send any picture, and then they would go, okay, this is a do, and let me tell you why this guy is obviously a time traveler from the future. Okay. And they still do it. They still release this magazine, and every month they have do's and don'ts, and they're themed, and okay, yeah. do's and don'ts. Canada, do's and don'ts. Uh, Maryland. Yeah. Just, it's fucking, it's a wonderful and it's hilarious. Then they expanded into VBS.TV. Yeah. This is where they said, okay, hey, we're a popular magazine. Maybe we can release content. Okay, but it's going to have to be short videos because, um, you know, a, we're just doing some silly, stupid stuff on the internet. No one takes it seriously yet. Yeah. So I started watching, when they first announced VBS.TV, I watched the shit out of that. And a lot of it was dirty as fuck. And the interesting thing is that they released so much content in the beginning, and a lot of it is gone now. Because yeah. it, they are treating VBS.TV like a cable channel, so they are getting rid of old stuff and bringing in new stuff and then getting rid of some old stuff and bringing in new stuff. So there are shows that they had in the beginning that may or may not be difficult to find now. Yeah. For example. I don't, I don't, I don't know when I became aware of Vice. I, I just don't know. Um Probably not well, too have, terribly have, long ago, but they, they but they have a channel on Roku. Yeah, they also have their own uh, um, TV show on HBO now. They are some serious shit. Yeah, 
one of the documentaries I saw there, uh, I might have mentioned it, but I think you would love it. Um, it's somewhere like Sweden or Norway or something like that, where there is a group of guys who have this fetish, yeah, and they like and they like they make themselves into plastic female dolls. Ugh. Like they have, they, yeah. they, they literally, they literally purchase. Okay. Okay. Because like there's, there's a little industry dedicated to this. <clears throat> They literally purchase flesh colored plastic looking body suits so that they will look like a female doll and then they'll dress themselves like dolls and you know they'll they'll do uh, okay. doll type yeah, makeup. No, and- no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've seen pictures of that. That's and they look freaking <laughs> They look hideous. They look yeah, downright yeah. hideous, like like horror movie hideous. And they get yeah. off on that. So 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 yeah, I, I I got totally what you're saying about Vice. <laughs> and yes, yeah. they have come become huge, and are like uh, almost a news source. Yeah, yeah. And I believe it all started from this, from this week, from what we saw. But I still want to talk about some of the early Vice magazine stuff that I saw, some of which may or may not be difficult to track down Yeah. nowadays. Like N- Natasha said, they had a whole series called The Vice Guide to Sex, and they once went to Japan and they they bought the used panties from the vending machine, and they went to strip clubs and brothels. But then they ended at a sex doll brothel in Japan, where uh, they all went to their own rooms and got their own sex doll. And they, it just burned in my memory. Uh, Sam Smith or whatever the guy is, who's basically in charge of a uh, vice coming out of his room naked holding his sex doll's severed head because apparently <laughs> he was too rough with it. <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, I decapitated my sex doll. Can I get another sex doll with a head? I killed this one. And so I saw that. That that was one of the first videos I saw. So even to this day, I have a hard time of him. I have a hard time with this guy going, so let me tell you about North Korea. Dude, yeah. I saw you decapitate a sex doll. This is going <laughs> to take me some time. Yeah. But, so for, the, but for, for the homework itself, honestly, I got to tell you, this one bored me. See, I think the reason why I like this one so much is because... I have seen this man in so many other crazy adventures. Yeah. Where literally this guy is doing drugs. This guy is in Mexico tripping out. This guy's having sex. This guy's tracking down people who have sex with donkeys. Yeah. And now this guy's in North Korea. So that's the thing that got me is that, oh, man, I've already seen this guy drunk like a hundred times. Now he is going to North Korea. And that probably to this man all i know is he's gonna find a way to get drunk in north korea yeah that's all i know i don't know what happens in north korea but i guarantee you he will get wasted there this and man he, will find a way and he did and he was singing he he anarchy in the uk <laughs> yeah yeah so so some of the documentaries that I loved in the beginning, yeah. there was a documentary, a multi-part documentary, where this guy traveled deep within South America yeah. looking for people who have sex with donkeys. <laughs> that was the documentary that Vice did. I don't know if you can even find it anymore, because literally... 
the documentary ends with what you think it's going to end with. Somebody fucking a donkey? Yeah, yeah. It's blurred, but still, oh. it's a guy fucking a donkey. There's a, there's a documentary on exorcisms. I may have said I, that. I you. probably I shouldn't have... have- I probably shouldn't have shown that much excitement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. He showed a surprising amount of excitement. <laughs> Hi, Bella. How you doing? You doing good? You doing good? Yeah, okay. Enjoy the show. Um, <laughs> the Exorcism documentary is really good. There's yeah. a documentary where they travel to a Christian music festival. Yeah, which is funny. There's one where they go to a rest home for old women in Mexico, but it's specifically a rest home for retired strippers and prostitutes. Oh, that's sweet. So it's like 70 and 80 year old former prostitutes. Yeah. It's surprisingly good. But the one documentary that blew me away. Oh, my God. They have a documentary on Alarma. I, I just just stopping at the previous one for a second. Okay. I, I, okay. I'm I'm just imagining that place, you know, and, and they're happy and they deserve to be. But it, you would walk into the place, you would walk into the place and be like, "Oh my god, I got crabs!" And then somebody looks, some <laughs> one of the residents looks at you, and you're like, "Yeah, we all do. Shut the fuck up." You know, see, see the the one thing that I remember about this documentary is that all of these women are like near the end of their lives yeah. and they're 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. But here's the best part. Yeah. They all think they're sexy as hell and fuckable. Oh, <laughs> so they all have this attitude of like, oh, yeah, no, that guy would do me because I'm <laughs> sexy as hell. And that's the best part about it is that all these women still think that they are like hot shit. <laughs> that's the part that, that I was blown away with is that not only are, are all these women old and former prostitutes, but oh my God, they still think they got the goods. They should, they should. Okay. They like good should. for you. You should write a self-help book, basically. No, they should get a website. And start making porn. And nice. upload. People, look. It's a sick society. People would be watching that. And they'll make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. But Alarma. Alarma. Um, so imagine, like, National Enquirer, right? Yeah. It's like a newspaper slash magazine. You find it at the supermarket. It's right there by the gum. So yeah. imagine National Enquirer, okay? But it does not talk about celebrities. It only talks about local crimes that are incredibly violent. But here's the kicker. It shows all of the graphic pictures of said violence. Ooh. That is Alarma magazine. It's one of the highest, um, most successful magazines in all of Mexico. Literally, you go to like a corner uh, store, there's a 90% chance they will sell Alarma. It'll be right there by the register. Everyone knows Alarma. They have so many reporters out there in Mexico that say, uh, oh, there's a crime uh, on 12th Street and Jefferson uh, a man was shot in the head. An Alarma reporter will be there before the police <laughs> to take a picture of the body, which will run in the next issue of Alarma. The reason why I know this yeah. is that a cousin of mine on my father's side, so the Mexican side that I don't know that well, he was out with a bunch of friends. They were partying. In Mexico, it is commonplace for everyone to take one car. Oh, man, let's go back to your place. Okay, all 12 of us can fit in this car. 
So mm. they all pile into this one car and they're all going and they go on a bridge, but they but one of them is drunk and there's an accident and my cousin was decapitated. Oh. I didn't know him that well. He didn't speak English. I didn't speak Spanish. There was a barrier. So I'm I was surprisingly okay with my dad coming home with an issue of alar- alarma that featured my cousin's bloodied head. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my Something god! Something to my remember cousin. him by. That's my cousin. I saw him two years ago at a family reunion. That's horrible. Also, Dad, what the hell is this magazine? How come I have never heard of it before? And you need to get me more. Yeah. It's like, oh my god! It's like suddenly Faces of Death is real, and it's a magazine. Yeah. Oh my God! So so Vice. I, I find that kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, they, like the magazine was basically like a National Enquirer, but they only focused on drug wars and violence and suicides and yeah. death. And it's amazing. And occasionally there's nudity, but mostly it's just some fucking corpses. And it's amazing. And it's the sort of thing that, like, oh, in Mexico, oh, yeah, we'll have that right next to the register. But in America, holy shit, there's no way this could exist. Yeah. It's like a page three girl. That couldn't exist in America. That's a British thing. There's no way it could exist here. And there's no way Alarma could ever exist in America. But in Mexico, oh, no, it's fucking everywhere. So Vice (laughs) follows Alarma for, like, a weekend. And the documentary is amazing, and that's when I learned that, like, Mexican drug dealers have literally – because in Mexico, is very Catholic, and Catholics have all of these fucking saints like Pokemon. So there literally is, like, a saint of drug dealers. There's a saint of death that bad people pray to in Mexico. Nice. And they they literally – yeah, so so Vice is following Alarma, and they stop at a – altar to the saint of death and it's fucking amazing so anyway alarma fucking love alarma but i'm pointing at bella during this period in time she is trying really hard to not pay attention to what i'm saying and (laughs) and, uh that's okay because this is all engram but i'm watching all of these things and they're all dirty but then i found a show on vbs called the cute show Okay. And that's when I'm like, holy shit, Emerald and Bella, get over here right now. I've got a show for you. It's called The Cute Show. Guess what? This episode is all about baby sloths. (laughs) This is a 12-minute documentary about baby sloths. We watched the shit out of that. The Cute Show. Oh, my God, Emerald shitters herself every episode so it's 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 literal everything that the show did was cute in yeah. some regard yeah every episode was just a different animal theme okay this week we're going to a cat show okay this week we're going to a hospital that takes care of baby animals and uh it takes care of them until they can enter the wild that every episode was that <laughs> nice. Eleanor, don't write on that book. Yeah, so that was every episode of the Cute Show. I used to show Bella and Emerald that. Now, the Cute Show is definitely still available, I think. Well, a lot of this stuff, like donkey fucking and, and uh, stuff, is a bit difficult to track down. Um, so nowadays, Vice is expanding. They're doing documentaries and film production and books. They have a show on HBO. Vice is big. They're having a moment. And basically, that all started with this week's homework. A yeah. peak inside of North Korea. This turned a shitload of heads. In fact, a lot of my articles specifically came from a, a, a report that Sam Smith or whatever his name is wrote for CNN. Yeah. And the CNN article uh, specifically starts, we here at CNN have been impressed by an 
independent news organization known as Vice. They recently went to North Korea, and it's like, holy shit. <laughs> if CNN are like, we like Vice, then okay, then maybe I should pay attention to these guys instead of uh, watching them try and find men who have sex with donkeys. Maybe this indie news organization can be taken seriously. Yeah. So this documentary is about North Korea. It's scary as hell and surreal. And it's a real trip, not only to see this happen, but to see it happen to these vice people, especially their schlubby, hard-partying founder schlubbing into North Korea. Yeah. And I really do think that this is an important video to watch, especially since we will all soon be stuck in a nightmarish post-apocalyptic landscape and it'll all be because of north fucking korea they hate us <laughs> they're a d dictatorship and they're gonna bomb the hell out of us at any second and let me tell you something the paranoia i feel over north korea yeah it is retro as hell it's the same way I felt when I went to the Y recently, and I'm in the the, the jacuzzi, and uh, Madonna's Lucky Star started playing. Yes. And I'm like, holy shit, I don't know when the last time was I heard Madonna's Lucky Star. Wow, that, that is an interesting feeling. It's like a tingling. It's like a remembrance. That's how I feel being fearful of nuclear war. Yes. Oh, cause, totally. Cause, uh, oh, totally. Yeah. Nuclear war scared the fuck out of me. Yeah. It scared the fuck out of me, too, but a different time period. People were really talking shit about Russia in the 80s. Oh, yeah. People were saying the same thing about Russia in the 80s during the Cold War. That well, because... is, of course, until the... And, but let's not forget the point when the Cold War ended. That was when our nation's champion... The Italian Stallion, Rocky Balboa, yeah. fought their champion, Ivan Drago, thereby ending the Cold War. Yes, yes. That's but, when it stopped. But everybody was insane about it in the 80s, because fucking Ronald Reagan stood up and called them the evil empire. Oh, yeah. And, and he, he, oh, was, yeah. he was Trump in it. Just what, yeah. just what Trump is doing now with North Korea. That's what Ronald Reagan was yep. doing with Russia. And with Russia, like, they could fuck us up. Like, like that's end of the world time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People with, were with all North, over that in with, the 80s, though. Yeah. With North Korea, we yep. may have a chance. You know? Um it yeah, there's a part of this documentary that makes me feel better because it's like, okay, they might have nuclear warheads and they might also kill us, but they also don't have food. Yeah. They also don't have food or electricity or cars, so that does make me feel kind of better. Maybe this is a Russia situation in the sense that no one has money and this isn't a functioning country and... Uh, yeah, maybe they're just kind of bluffing and they have no means to actually start this war. Maybe it's literally the Cold War all over again because Russia was eventually fucking bankrupt as shit. Yeah. So maybe it's exactly like that, but at the same time, no, they could fuck us up. My, my, my big concern about it isn't really North Korea. Okay. Yeah. Because they, they like just got a missile that's getting some range. And they've just got a warhead. Okay. It's not like they have yeah. millions and millions of them. Okay. And if they hit San Francisco, I'll feel bad. You know? But they probably would have just used their one missile, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay? So that's not, t I mean, it would totally suck. I mean, it, it would be awful if they, if they nuked San Francisco. But it, but it would basically stop there, okay? So that's not what's really worrying me. 
what's really worrying me is the rest of the world saying, you know what? We can deal with North Korea, but America is getting too motherfucking dangerous. Yeah. And it comes down to Trump saying, we're going to nuke North Korea. And the whole rest of the world says, the fuck you are. Yeah. And we we have a baboon to handle that situation. Yeah. We literally have a motherfucking talking chimp to get us through that situation. It's kind of, it, yeah, it's kind of fucked up that it's like, okay, we understand this North Korea situation is bad, but you can't threaten to destroy all of North Korea. There are people in there. Yeah. No, yeah. You're threatening to destroy an entire nation. Like, you can't fucking do that. Mm-hmm. Fucking, uh, President Trump is literally just saying the things that I'm sure every other president wanted to say, but knew that he couldn't because he's fucking president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, but in the 80s, people were all over uh, TV and movies and books about the coming nuclear war and the invasion. When I was in eighth grade, I had a book called USSR. And it was yeah. all about how we will all be acting when Russia takes us over. Yeah. You won't be able to listen to popular music anymore. TV will be outlawed. There will be no more movies. Well, there was... there you, was you be stuck buying bootleg uh, yeah. Beatles cassettes. Mm-hmm. No, USSA. That's what it was called. USSA. Ah. Uh. And I was convinced that the nuclear war was going to happen and Russia was going to take us over. I also remember a very haunting episode of Benson. Really? And just saying that out loud makes me feel so fucking old. (laughs) But again, I remember a very haunting episode of Benson. Yeah. Well, and there was there was also Red Dawn. And mm-hmm. if you remember the TV series America, spelled with a K. A, yeah. Yeah. You know, and the day after and Testament oh, and yeah. oh, Looking Glass. And, and there was yeah. a British nuclear war one that I absolutely loved. Um, uh, I believe I remember that one. It is called Pip Pip Cheerio. We're all about to die. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, oh it had know. such, it had su- such. Yeah. Well, John Cleese is amazing. John Cleese is amazing. My favorite part of the movie is, is they, they all knew the nuclear attack was coming. So all of the like CEO types and things like that. Okay. They went down to the bomb shelter in the basement of the building, you know, and basically just fuck everybody else. And here is something that I absolutely never thought of because we always put bomb shelters in the basement of buildings. That's a normal thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they all go in there, the bombs fly, the building flies falls and buries the basement. So they're going to die. They're going to die. They're not going to die from the missiles, but they're going to die because they're just buried underground. Yeah. And they're going to eventually starve to death or run out of air. Speaking of something British that you never thought of, uh, I, a few months ago, an episode of Full Frontal with Samantha B ruined Faulty Towers for me. Oh, what did she do? She was talking about a hatred of immigrants and played any random clip from any episode of Faulty Towers and then ended it with, 
<laughs> yeah, immigrants are stupid. And I'm like, God damn it, you just ruined every Faulty Towers for me. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't notice that the show was crazy ass racist towards foreigners, but god damn it, I loved that show. I, I I don't know if that necessarily counts when it comes when it comes to a a comedy and b the time period of the comedy. Yeah, but I still spent so many times quoting that show, going "gay," and it's like, okay, yeah, no, now I hear it. Yeah, okay, I'm being racist. Fuck you. Yeah. God damn it. So, in a positive bit of news, this fear of nuclear war, very retro for me. Yes. And the fear is not at all helped by this documentary. So, basically, they can't get into North Korea in the beginning, so they visit the demilitarized zone. And they really do try their hardest to make it all, this is the most dangerous place in the world. Yeah, Yeah, but you know what? Conan did a show here, so not 100% in fear right now in the future, where I've seen the Conan O'Brien episode from the Demilitarized Zone. Yeah. Not 100% in fear of danger of your life. So they can't get in, yada, yada, yada. Then they hear, why don't you just go to China and bribe the consulate and they'll get you into North Korea. And they do it and it fucking works. <laughs> and suddenly at 6 a.m. they're rushed into North Korea via China. They're not allowed to bring in anything, no cell phones, no music, no printed anything like books or magazines. Because the people there are all indoctrinated and beaten down and mind controlled oh, yeah. so much so that if you ever want to get an army of North Koreans to help you, bring one issue of People magazine. Yeah. That's all you need. It doesn't even need to be a new episode. Yeah. Shocking death in General Hospital. Also, are you excited about this new McRib thing? (laughs) Yeah, okay. Yeah. You can take down a large portion of North Korea with that issue of shocking (laughs) death. R.I.P. Steve Irwin. Okay, with that, you can take over a large portion of North Korea. Yeah. If North Korea ever were to become free, these people are going to feel like they just came out of cryogenic stasis. You know? Yeah. They'll come out and they'll walk around and just be like amazed at the world and scared. (laughs) You know, like caveman lawyer. Did I lose you? I'm sorry for the pause just then. Um, Bella was in the kitchen making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because she uses 80% of the bread in the house. And she asked, um, why does China hate us so much? And I didn't want to correct her that we're not talking about China. We're talking about North Korea. Because technically, North Korea is kind of sort of like the, I don't know, the redheaded stepchild of China. So I just whispered to her, because they're communists. So then Bella asked, what is a communist? So I was trying to explain that to her, and it became this whole thing. I, 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 and and I'm sure it would. It would have to. Yeah. Like, there's no easy answer to that. Why does yeah. China hate us, and what is communism? Bella, I'll tell you when you're older, honey. How about that? Because if you roll off what communism, is, what communism is as an ideology, sounds pretty cool. But when you have to discuss the reality of communism, big fucking different story. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So this documentary was made back when Kim Jong licensed to ill was in charge of North Korea. Yes. 
No, it's not that guy from Oakja. I can't. Did you you watched Oakja with the rest of them? Yes, I was there. God damn it! <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how many people in this family watched Oakja. I am not giving up meat. I do not care about the movie Oakja. I do not give a shit. If you guys mm-hmm. had just asked me what is Oakja, I could have warned you about it. It is vegan propaganda. Yes. I am not watching Oakja. We are a goddamn meat eating family here. You don't think about elephant. Oh, okay, but just screw Netflix is what I'm saying. Because that is literally just veganism, vegan propaganda. That is what that movie is. It's literally what all of us said after. We were just like, you know what? Netflix said, we've got an exciting new movie called Oakja. And I'm like, what's this about? And they said, don't ask that. It's called Oakja. And I'm like, okay, the fact that you won't tell me what this movie is about is making me suspicious. What is this movie about? Oh, well, it has all of these stars in it. And I'm like, great, but what is Oakja about? Oh, well, look at these reviews. Amazing. I cried. I'll never eat meat again. Red flag for Steve. <laughs> Red flag. <laughs> and that's when I'm like, okay, I'm just Wikipediaing this shit and figuring out the plot. Okay, this is horrible. This is literally like, did PETA make this film? <laughs> because literally, this is just, this is just like pro animal anti-human propaganda <laughs> basically garfield made this film yes garfield and heathcliff yeah. got together with snoopy and clarabelle cow from mickey mouse clubhouse and decided to make a movie for them yeah featuring adam scott from parks and rec and that's what that goddamn movie is i could have warned you guys about this we, we need to talk about this <laughs> I am not watching Oakja for the podcast. No. no. Not what I meant. Okay. I know, because we're talking at length about Oakja in the middle of North Korea, and that's not proper timing. But still, we cannot devote a huge portion of the podcast about Oakja because that is anti meat propaganda. God damn it, I am going to get Oakja. I'm going to download it. I'm going to put it on a DVD and I'm going to get that DVD and I'm going to kill as many animals as I can with it. <laughs> Just to combat <laughs> what the movie Oakja is doing to people. Yeah. Literally, Deanna is, Deanna is in the end of the movie with tears on the couch going, I'm never going to eat meat again. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm going to get this movie and somehow kill animals with you it. You should kill an elephant, pig, and... I'm going to kill an <laughs> elephant, a pig, and a hippo with it, yes, because that, but the, that's what Oakja is made of. I, exactly. I get ya, I get ya. Well, no, 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 no. But it's still, it's freaking pop, pop, propaganda. It's propaganda. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Bella. I will get uh, back on track. A lot of North Korea is superficial. So you go to a 48-story hotel, yeah. super expensive, massive hotel, and guess what? You're the only ones there. <laughs> yeah. You eat food in a big banquet hall, and they're laying out all this food, and guess what? No one's eating the food because, there again, there's no one else there. Yeah. All Kim Jong-il is trying to do is show the press, look, we have money, we have food, whatever you heard is not true. It's trippy as hell, so they're constantly being followed by guards and secret police and handlers, basically. I would like to take an aside for a moment and mention former WCW head Eric Bischoff. Yes. Okay. Way, 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 way back in the day, I read Eric Bischoff's biography, which I believe was published by WWE because uh, times change quickly. But anyway, yes. um, is he still he with WWE? Biography. Huh? Is he still with oh, WWE? No, 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 not at all. I don't know what he's doing now, but he's definitely not with the WWE anymore. The WWE has this thing now where. Raw is its own separate brand, and SmackDown is its own separate brand. And then they've got NXT, which is like the training ground for Raw and SmackDown. And then they have WWE 205 or whatever it's called, which is just 
cruiserweights and young people. And so they have all of these different individual brands, and they are desperate for people to fill these brands. So what they're doing is they're, they're, they're literally bringing every old person back. <laughs> is what they're doing. Um, right. Hold on, let me pause this for a second because I need to pee. Bob Kent is like you. But Bob will tell you this. You haven't got long before you all try to kill yourselves. Because you're crazy. And you can put your dick back at the Bob. Bob is only what lives inside of each and every one of you. Oh, so you'll vote for anyone? Challenge accepted. How long will the war last? Will our own cities and homes be bombed? Which is our number one target? Germany or Japan? What of the supply problem? Can air power bomb Germany into submission? Can we build planes that can bomb Japan direct from continental America? Every American man, woman, and child must see victory through air power. So the WWE is desperate to hire people to fill all of these empty positions because basically they now own four different brands. Back in the day, it was just we own the WWE, but now technically they own four different WWEs. Uh So they are so desperate. So one of the things that they have been doing is just hiring as many retro people as they can for a while. So it's weird to see these brand new wrestlers like Braum Strowman wrestling gold dust. (laughs) It's like you wrestled wrestled Roddy Roddy Piper at a WrestleMania. How the fuck old are you? (laughs) The Dudleys were there for a while. The Hardy Boys are there for now yeah. and that's how things are with wwe right now so is eric bischoff there now no will he be soon i don't know probably they're desperate see i i i, I first off when they when they opened up smackdown they were trying to do that with smackdown to begin with where it would be kind of separate from raw you know yeah. And it looked it, it looked like SmackDown was the farm team. You know? Yeah. You had your lower card wrestlers and things like that. And then they would get kicked over to Raw. And I I always thought that it would that it would be like, okay, Vince McMahon, you concentrate on Raw and give Eric Bischoff SmackDown. And then you could still continue a, a version of the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, it's ridiculous that Raw is still three hours long. No show needs three fucking hours. Yeah. It is ridiculous that that is still three hours long. The only reason that Raw was three hours long was to fight in the Monday Night Wars, which in no way exists because you basically have a monopoly, Vince McMahon. Yeah. You do not need this three hours. That is a pain to watch. If you are a WWE fan, you need to watch three hours of Raw and then two hours of SmackDown and, I don't know, an hour of WWE 205 and an hour of NXT. That's what, like seven or eight hours right there a week that you have to devote to one company. That's not that's not wrestling. That's homework. That's an yeah. assignment. Yeah. <laughs> Wrestling's a fucking pain right now. So anyway, Eric Bischoff wrote his biography and he was talking about how a bunch of WCW wrestlers were uh honored to go and perform a wrestling show in North Korea 
and it was a big deal. And him and Hulk Hogan and all of the big people made their way to North Korea, and it was such a big deal. But apparently, uh, Eric Bischoff didn't know all of the rules. Yeah. And so, fuck Eric Bischoff, if you can imagine this, and I can totally picture this in the world of this documentary. Eric Bischoff, being Eric Bischoff, wakes up at 5 a.m. to go jogging. <laughs> okay. Basically, Eric Bischoff almost killed. Because mm-hmm. the one thing you can't do... No, imagine, and imagine the guy who stars in this documentary just deciding... You know what? I'm going to wake up super early, escape from all of my handlers, and walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> Is basically what Eric Bischoff did. And he, he like, jogs two times, like, a, around the neighborhood. And then when he comes back, basically, all of the Korean police is waiting for him. <laughs> Like, dude, you're in North Korea. You can't just escape and go for a fucking jog. You almost died. Yeah. Like, what the hell, Eric Bischoff? Yeah. So anyway, they go and see, like, a captured U.S. vessel, and they go to a tea shop. They're really yeah. tripped out because there's no electricity the whole way. There's no... The car's on the road, and the sad tea shop girl is literally just, I'm working at this shop. Yeah. One day, I've, I've practiced my entire life speaking English in the hopes to one day speak to an English person. I've been here alone for six months. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, an American is coming in? Uh, hi, American. I can speak American. Let us talk about American stuff. Do you want tea? <laughs> So depressing. Then, yeah. th- then they go see the demilitarized zone from the North Korean side. Yeah. Then they get lightly threatened with possible crime. Then they get shit faced drunk, which is fun because that's when vice is at its best. Yes. It is when there is drinking involved. I learned a lot. Like for example. Uh, North Korean's former president, Kim Il-sung, who died in the mid-90s, is still considered president even after his death. Yes. He is their, quote, eternal president. That might seem crazy, but for 40% of Americans, Ronald Reagan is our eternal president. Yes. Mm-hmm. Fact. <laughs> Now, I, I, I can understand you being scared by this, okay? Cause, because <clears throat> everything All- that you can't see really makes you wonder, you know? Yeah. Really makes you want, like, what, what the fuck is going on that you can't see? And all we could see is this. And yeah. what we're seeing is scary in itself but yeah. really uh, if you want to be scared there it's and it's still on netflix okay i checked on it i, I actually saw it when i was looking up the, the vice documentary it's called the propaganda game yes yes i am aware of it but i haven't seen it oh it's good it's it's this australian filmmaker okay Right there. This is interesting. It's an Australian filmmaker, okay, who is really concerned about fracking in Australia. So she decides, you know what I need to do about fracking in Australia? I need to make an anti-fracking propaganda movie. Nice. Which is like, like, really? You, you're like the first person I have ever heard just flat out say you're gonna make a propaganda. I mean, we know a lot of the shit we see is propaganda, you know. Yeah. But she's like, she's like proud of it, and I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Okay. So she actually, so she's like, okay, how does one make a propaganda movie? 
who is really good with propaganda movies? And she's like, North Korea. So she actually contacted North Korea itself <laughs> and said, because this is the movie I found out about Kim Jong-il's film book. Yeah. Okay. They're really into film and they're really into propaganda films. So she says, I would like to come and make a documentary about North Korea's propaganda films. And they were like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so she had a crew. She had, she had interviews set up with people. And that was like the most frightening part, you know, and, and she went to bigger places. She got to see a fuckload more because yeah. cause they gave her a pretty, a pretty fair hand, you know, because they're, they're getting their balls rubbed or so yeah. they feel, you know? So right. and she covers a lot of the same the same ground. So like she covers um the 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 US dinghy that they captured and are so proud of. She covers it because of the propaganda film that they mentioned in the Vice thing. Right. Okay, so so she's there doing it because of the movie and gets to do the story of the ship just because. <laughs> and it is it is chilling because you get to hear so many of these people actually speaking you yeah. know and they I are love good propaganda film they are all our glorious leader this and our glorious leader that and yes we do enjoy yes. making the, these movies because it pleases our glorious leader they 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 <laughs> there was there was I forget exactly where she was okay but there was a bathroom in this place okay where Kim Jong Il once went and relieved himself for it so they closed off <laughs> so they so they closed off the bathroom forever put velvet ropes around it with a huge plaque announcing that Kim Jong Kim Jong Il went to the bathroom there. Nice. And it was no longer open to the pub public because it was preserved. I want to be that famous. I want to be that famous that they're like, "Oh, excuse me. You can't shit here." <laughs> Steve shit here once. The Steve. Uh -huh. And so no one can shit here anymore. We have preserved his shit. The for Steve. Thing. The end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, even wanting to shit here is a crime in this nation. Yeah. So you're going to need to stop. Well, Kim, Kim Jong-un, the current Luna Chicken Chief, he doesn't yeah. have an anus. Oh yeah, no. You yeah. you've heard that, right? He just he just secretes secretes his waste via sweat. <laughs> <laughs> the the more I think about that, that is one of the grossest things I've ever said in this entire podcast. <laughs> The more I think about the logistics of it, though, yeah. like really think about it. Yeah, your sweat would be brown and and smell. Uh, uh, you would literally would be, be covered in shit. No, I would like to take a small aside, if I may, because this lengthy uh, North Korean conversation is a bit depressing. Yes, I have a friend named Sarah. Sarah McBride. She is a uh, library staff member in Alaska, and the entire library staff 
wants to dress as Harry Potter characters for Halloween, so they're already planning all of their outfits. And she's wondering if she should do, like, a Ravenclaw student or maybe Bellatrix, Bellatrix Lestrange. And so I was trying to think of, uh, because I ran a Harry Potter club for a number of years in California, of a different sort of Harry Potter outfit for her. And I think I came up with a great Harry Potter... Halloween costume for her where she is still an important Harry Potter costume a very important Harry Potter character but slightly different so that no one else could be dressed as her okay stairs stairs nice stairs there's a lot of stairs in the movie you and could either be the stairs that Harry Potter lives behind, or maybe like you're at the party and you keep running around the party because you're the uh, Hogwarts stairs and those move around. Yeah. So that would be good. Like if you don't want to really hang out with anyone, you know, <laughs> at the party or whatever, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to move. Oh, I, I'm the Hogwarts stairs. You just keep moving. If you don't want to talk to people. There's there's a bit of genius in that, yes. Yeah. Or you go as the book's ISBN number. <laughs> that's another that's an important part of the book. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Although to be fair, I just want to say from an insider's perspective, some booksellers really hate it when you say ISBN number. Because the N in ISBN uh, stands yeah. for number. Yeah. So some people really hate that. And those some people have sticks up their butts. Yeah. Just, I, 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 and I can kind of see it because I was always really p- p- pissed off at uh, the ABS braking system. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The ABS braking system. Yeah. Well, well, it stands for automatic. Breaking system. Breaking system. Breaking system, yeah. 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 So then the vice crew takes the subway. Then they go to a library with the world's greatest desk. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Then they go to a school, and then they go to a show. Then the big Airy Yang Games Festival, 120,000 people in yeah. unison. Yeah. North Koreans only get... It's interesting to me. That North Koreans only get news and media from North Korea. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's amazing to me. They only listen to North Korean music and only hear North Korean news and only hear news from the North Korean government about how amazing North Korea is. And that just blew my mind. I'm at work and I'm listening to Pakistani rap. <laughs> And French punk and filthy Spanish rock and roll songs and stuff. Literally Pakistani rap. I want to do a a preface. A no, 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 a follow up, if I may. Yes. I always hated Jay Z. He literally sampled a song from Little Orphan Annie, and everyone was okay with this. But then a Pakistani rap artist, um released a song in Pakistan, a rap song where he sampled the theme to Knight Rider. And it was such a huge hit that suddenly it starts playing like crazy in New York. And Jay-Z, I didn't think he had this in him, but Jay-Z went, what the hell is that song? It's the number one rap song in uh, Pakistan. Fuck it. (laughs) I'm doing a version of it. Oh, God. And so he literally did a, he got the most popular rap song in Pakistan and said, hey, do you mind? I'm going to rap over this, then let you rap some. And so he didn't release it in one of his official albums. He only released it as a single and it was a limited edition single. But literally, there is a song out there where it's Pakistani's leading rap artist and Jay-Z. <laughs> and that is the one part where I went, God damn it, I guess I like Jay Z now because he's literally rapping with a Pakistani rapper and I gotta hand it to him. That's kind of ballsy. Yeah. I can't think of any other rapper that would be out there and say, What what is this Finnish punk 
I'll give it a shot. I I picture it. I picture it kind of being like if you're kicking back watching a Bollywood movie, like you do. You know, you just hanging back watching a Bolly, Bollywood movie, and all of a sudden you're like, "Is that Brad Pitt?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is yeah. Brad Pitt. What the fuck is Brad Pitt being in, in a volleyball? Bollywood. It's so outrageous, I can't even say it. I cannot articulate yeah. it. Yeah, the the Pakistani rapper is named Punjabi MC. <laughs> oh. oh, that probably just and made me racist. And it sounds like one of my crazy mashups, because I'm a yeah. big fan of mashups, where some random dude in the middle of nowhere will get like two or four songs and mash them up into one brand new song. And I'm a big fan of mashups, and it sounds like a mashup because it's a Pakistan, a heavily Pakistani sounding song. But then you just hear the rock in the building. Oh, <laughs> it's so weird. It sounds so bizarre, but it's a Pakistani singer and Jay Z doing a duet, basically. And it's like, you don't damn, I gotta bring me it. flowers. Yeah, That's amazing. Anymore. Fucking amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm in receiving and I'm listening to all this like like French music and Spanish music and I've got two Japanese jazz songs on my phone. Yeah. North Koreans are only allowed to have North Korean shit. So they're told that every nation fucking loves them. Yeah. Yeah. And they North and Korea. they are the most powerful country in the world. Yeah, and North and Koreans the, aren't aware of how other people think of North Koreans because yeah. they only get their own shit. Like and that's it's mind of, blowing. Yeah, there's a part of that that scares me, especially with our president's America first rhetoric. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, wait a second, do you just want us to be North Korea? Yeah. Where we only get things from American perspectives. And that was what was so scary when Trump brought out those little girls to dance during the campaign. Yes. Yeah. It was like, oh, motherfucker. I, no, no, I, 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 I've already tapped. Let me tap out again. Let me tap out for every fucking butt frightening thing you do. Yeah. So, it's an unsettling documentary. Literally, I think everyone in America should watch this. There is a sort of sequel, because when when Vice started their show on HBO, they decided, what if we try and go back to North Korea? But they, the guy, Sam Smith, or whatever his name is, literally is not allowed to go back to North Korea ever again. Like, he's been put on the fucking list, and if he ever even sets one pinky in North Korea, he's basically jailed for the rest of his life. So they (laughs) sent other people. The way that they got around it is, apparently, Kim Jong-il was a huge fan of the Chicago Bulls. Uh Uh-huh, okay. And Kim Jong-il passed that along to Kim Uh Jong-un. So Vice Magazine said, what if we send American basketball delegates to oh. North Korea as a peace offering sort of thing. So it, it vice, so they, they brought that to North Korea and North Korea said yes. So in the middle of all this nuclear testing and stuff, North Korea got a North Korea was sent Dennis Rodman and three members of the fucking Harlem Globetrotters. So that's how that happened. Yes, yeah, so that's how that happened. And I started watching it, um, but then I tapped out because apparently there's only so much North Korea I can have. It it gets rough. It does get rough. Yeah, no, it does get fucking rough. So I didn't watch all of it, but. I watch like 12 minutes and it's like, oh, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I've had North 
enough North Korea for a fucking while and I'm depressed as shit. So that is it for homework this week. And I sincerely, sin fucking sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and sinuses have all been suitably opened. Ah. Uh, but don't think for one second that you're getting out of here that easily, Buster Brown. Don't forget next week's homework. I've been pointing at Bella for a while, and she finally came here. And that, that, that brings this uh, more to a head. And for homework next week, Bunny. Yes. Am I to believe that you have never seen an episode of Rick and Morty? That is correct. Oh, Bunny. North Korea got me depressed, Bunny. <laughs> oh, you're needing, you know, needing that palate cleanser? Real fucking depressed. Depressed as shit. Shit's got me real boned. And we do need some counter programming set. We need that cleanser. Yes. That way that you watch a really scary horror movie and then you watch a cartoon. So next week we will be watching two episodes of the show Rick and Morty. And I spent a remarkable amount of time trying to think of what episodes we should watch. Should we watch one episode, two episodes? I went through the entire new season, season three, trying to find a good episode. We were going to watch Tales from the Citadel, but I wasn't sure. And then finally, I figured it out. Yeah. Bunny. Okay. I believe I have selected two of the best episodes. Season one, episode eight, and season two, episode eight. They are both available for free on dailymotion.com. I will send you the links. Season 1, Episode 8. Season 2, Episode 8. I believe when I mention these episodes, they will cause a shriek in the house. Nevertheless, I will continue. We will be watching the two episodes more commonly known to Rick and Morty fans as Interdimensional Cable. Yes! Thank you, Bella. Okay. I love interdimensional cable. Damn right, interdimensional cable. If Aww, I'm going to get him in cable. any way interested in Rick and Morty, it's going to be via interdimensional cable. That's your instincts are correct. Yes. Basically, uh, Can you Rick is disgusted with um, shows like The Bachelor. Like, congratulations, you just watched a man get fake married. <laughs> Good for you in spending this time. So he upgrades their cable so that now they get cable from a limitless amount of alternate dimensions. Nice. So that literally anything you can think of, you can now see on cable. Yes. Okay. It's amazing. There's the, it's some SNL in there. Bobby yes. Moynihan. Send Love me that. the send me the links if you got them. If not, I could track I, them down. I, Just but I absolutely. Love. Season one, episode eight. Season two, episode eight. Interdimensional cable. Rick and Morty, next week on Homework with the Pope on Film. Be sure and tune in. It's going to be amazing. All right.